going on over here? Well, uh, got our spare brushes, or replacement brushes rather, for these grinders that have stopped working. Um, I've already torn this open, but um, the brushes are down in here. Right here there's like a huge buildup of uh, hair and fiberglass and dust and uh, I haven't blown it out with the air compressor yet, but I'll do that first. But anyway, uh, we're just tearing this apart. I'm gonna replace these brushes. And what were the symptoms? The symptoms were it sporadically turning on and off when you were <laughs> using it. <laughs> That's with the uh, with the trigger locked. Um, these have just a, a a thumb switch here, but it can lock. So. I usually just lock them and, and run them because that's the most comfortable thing to do. That's why I like these ones as opposed to the paddle ones are very fatiguing. And these ones are easy to actuate on and off. Easy to click and lock and just easy to click with your thumb and turn it back off. But uh, what happens is that the brushes get worn and it'll, you'll turn it on and nothing will happen and you give it a bump and it'll turn on and then it'll, when they get really worn they start to cut in and out and then that's just it they're dead so um you can probably maybe see that that brush is just about completely wore down to nothing there so nothing there and this one <clears throat> actually started melting its uh housing a little bit yeah and i think this one was the one <laughs> the that's, one that stopped first uh that's the one that i was using the other day yeah that, that wore out. This one wore out um, maybe about a month ago and uh, I'm glad I waited because uh, we just got both sets of brushes from the same place at the same time. So you can buy these brushes separately and you can also get the holders for them usually. So I did order a set of holders for this one because it was uh, worn out. Wasn't sure if this one's gonna still be good or not. Yeah, it was melted in there a little bit, so figured it might not come out and just best to replace it. It's like two and a half bucks for the red uh, plastic holder, so no big deal. So I think the total was like $25 for a uh, set of brushes for this, set of brushes for that, and the holders, plus shipping. Shipping was uh, like 10-ish, I think, of that. So roughly uh, 12 bucks a grinder to get them back on the road again and we'll get uh, awful lot of mileage out of these yeah. I know that we've brand new they're 99 99 bucks yep yeah we've had these grinders for an awful long time um, I don't know when we got them I believe that we've replaced the brushes on one of these before at some point yeah uh, I thought that there was a date on this one maybe it's worn off I do know that they're awful old though that would be nice to get these repaired <clears throat> that might be like a tiny little torques but we'll see if the flathead works out They used a Torx on that? Yeah. Like that screw is miniature. Yeah. Why so tiny? <laughs> oh, you got it though. Yeah. Maybe it is just a straight, huh? No, it's a little Torx. It's a little Torx? It's a tiny little Torx. <laughs> so this has a little felt pad and stuff on it. They could have bought a whole kit. But just need a new armature. So. New brush holder. A brush holder, rather. Suppose we could have got some uh, some emery and clean those up a bit, but uh, theirs is gonna get tore up again. So, yep. And short of having to tear the whole thing apart, I don't know. I guess the guy could just spin this. I think we do have some emery cloth here, some fine, uh, not emery cloth, but just uh, some. I could sandpaper. 
Yeah, I'll go grab it and you can just hold it in there and give the give the arbor a few spins, huh? Yep. Won't hurt it then. You can see all this build up right here. That's just the, the fiberglass the... strands and fibers and dust and there's your culprit of worn out brushes. Yeah, so this stuff is very abrasive, so it, it does eat up brushes fairly quickly. I don't know, it seems like we get a, a few years out of uh, out of them before they go. Yeah, well. It's, it's hard to say an approximate time frame, but. Yeah. There's new brush holder, brush. It's a little bit of a difference in uh, brush there. <laughs> yeah, I'd say they're a little bit worn. So pretty simple. There's a little felt gasket on that side, and then on this side, there's the same thing with a cap and a little torque screw. Put that in there. And pretty simple to repair. Screw it in. A lot cheaper than buying a new one. Yep. Got a little spring here that there is a convenient tab that you just spring it up onto. And if I can get it over there onto the brush. Like that. Snaps right in. Applies pressure onto it. And you have a, a lead that just plugs back in right here. You're good to go. Yeah. Now it's best to do this when it's unplugged. <laughs> uh, struggle is real. Get your fingers out of the way. Oh, I'm not pushing on it. <laughs> Need a little pair of pliers. A little pair of needle nose pliers. Yeah, maybe. There we go. Had to rock it back and forth. Alright. Simple as that. Flip it over, do the other side. Be good as new. That's right. Same thing for this one. It's just a slightly different setup. It's got a different uh, holder for the brush and uh, new brush set right there. I'm pretty sure these were just worn down to nubs too. They were there in that tape there, but yeah, they, there weren't, wasn't much left. Actually, one had a spring oh. inside of it and it had blown through and <laughs> was riding on the on the rotor is that the rotor or armature yeah armature i guess I right kind of forget the terminology of electric motors i'm not too up on the proper phrases that spinny thing yep What was that? Did I drop a screw? Nope. Crow dropped a muscle on our shelter deck. Mm. The crows like to go harvest mussels and then they'll fly around and they'll drop them on something hard. They seem to like the shelter deck for some reason. Parking lots. Our shelter deck, I don't know why. Yeah, well, Matt will get these back together. Um, here's the sanding discs I got. 24 grit. That should shred some glass pretty good. Also got some 60 grit ones. Uh, just for general blending, like where the mat 
uh, ends and meets new stuff, you'll end up with a ridge there. It's kind of nice to blend that stuff in. Yeah, so just waiting for him to get this fixed up so I can use it. And uh, I'll go put my other one away before I prematurely wear it out. <laughs> we like to keep grinders on the boat when we're out fishing because you never really know when you might need to cut something. Yeah, good all-purpose tools. Yeah, they are really good. So not just for grinding or whatever, but usually it's good to have a cutting desk. You never know when you might need to, to cut through something. Yeah, it's kind of funny. We bought another grinder the other day and uh, forgot that we had a new one at home hidden away. So and we bought in Juno, actually. Yeah. A new boat. Yeah. That's the tough thing about shop at home and boats is that your tools they end up getting shuffled around a lot um it's probably it'd be nice to have a enough tools that you don't need to do that but it's not really cost effective to have three sets of tools so there's some stuff that you end up kind of dragging back and forth which can be a bit of a hassle sometimes if you're in a hurry and you forget to grab something Well, is it going to work is a question. Mm -hmm. What's your confidence level? Pretty high. Oh, oh, don't forget that little rubber thing down there. <laughs> it's already, I don't know if that'll do anything. Yeah, it's a grommet. Yeah, but it's for the strain relief and that other half of it broke off. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I gotcha. Can't do much now. Well, will it just fit in the, the hole and just kind of act as a plug at least? Yeah, it probably will. Or some black tape. You know, we should just black tape it up. Let's get some black tape and put a big wad there. Because that'll help out. Right here? Yeah. Okay, so when it pinches back together, it'll... Gotcha. Yeah, and, and we can just build it out a little bit because it will act as a bit of a strain relief again. Had I been thinking, I would have ordered one. <laughs> Anyways, well, then we have to home remedy. What a horrible taping job. Well, hold that end for me then. It's all wrinkly. You'll never see it when it's caked in dust. I'll feel it though. Move your hand. Now slide that bushing thing back up there and put it inside. I, I think if you just leave that in here, it'll kind of help cut down on the, <laughs> the dust ingress, but yeah. that's kind of actually a silly thing because it's just gonna suck it up through the vents anyways. Anyways, it's the thought that counts, right? That's right. Actually, last time I tore this apart, uh, thinking it was the brushes, it was actually the cord that had been bent around enough that inside the insulation it had worn down to like one strand of copper going through. So Amazing it was still working. Yeah. Need nimble fingers. Mine aren't so nimble. Go. Looks good. That won't go in there. It will. Just haven't got that far. I see. Am I rushing you? You are. Am I annoying you? Micromanaging behind the camera. Got the producer breathing down my neck. 
demanding production. He's ready for his grinder, that's why. He wants it for fun. You know what, I actually miss um, this one because the locking mechanism for the arbor is different. This, this model has it on the top and the other one has it on the side. This is not a really old grinder right here. Yeah, that one is old. I looked for one earlier, I didn't see anything. 2008. Oh, 2000, there it is. I thought that one had a date on it. Okay, so. And got some mileage out of that baby. Yeah. I think that's the one that we probably replaced brushes in before. It is. And apparently did a, a cord repair too at some point, huh? Yep. Yeah, well, you can't beat that, guys. No. We're not especially brand loyal for stuff, but uh, usually when we find a good product, we, we will stick with it. And these have been good grinders to us for some reason. They've just held up well. I know you can get them cheap at Harbor Freight and stuff, but uh, but we don't have a Harbor Freight here, so. All right, moment of truth. It's our little. Might want to take the end off of that or put a disc on it. There you go. I get it all prepped and ready for you. Yeah. I think my tightening doodad is probably in the fish holder. You know, one thing I did notice with the new DeWalt though, is that it doesn't have the, uh, well this one doesn't have it either. They usually have an O-ring that goes on here, so um, when you replace the, the disc or the blade on these and you tip it over, this thing doesn't fall off. like. In a home shop, it really wouldn't be a very big deal, but basically what happens is you're out on the dock and you do that and it falls through the crack. Or we've got these lovely scuppers that pretty much eat everything that you drop on the deck. Like you wouldn't think the chances of something going through that hole are as high as they are, but it's about a 99.8% chance that it will go through a scupper. And that's super annoying. Is that supposed to come off? Did I get the wrong one? No, does this thing come off? I thought these things come off. Uh, well, um, yeah, that, oh yeah, that comes off. So that one's got the O-ring on it. That's what I was just talking about. It's got an O-ring on there that makes it, oh, okay. like, it just won't fall off. I see. You have to like, you have to well, like almost done, pry that thing I'll off. I'll use that one instead? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so these always came with a with an O-ring in here that that make them hard to to, to just fall off. All right. and, and apparently the this either this brand doesn't or um, it's a different style. It does have a groove in there. A guy could certainly put one in there. I think. Yeah. Sparks may or may not fly. Let's see. Just dust. All right, back in action. Well, I guess that means I got to get to work here, so we'll catch you later. Next time on Two Time Tuesday.